Hi, Steve here. And in this video, you're going to learn how to use luminosity masks in Photoshop to create warm golden highlights in your landscape or seascape photos. So if you're completely new to luminosity masking, then you can follow along and do exactly what I'm showing you and it will work. But if you want to get started learning the core luminosity masking techniques from the ground up, then I recommend that you download my PDF guide, An Introduction to Luminosity Masking. Uh, it's free and the link is in the description. And if you like this video, then just give it a thumbs up to let me know so that I can keep making more just like it. And remember to subscribe to my channel and hit the little bell notification icon so that YouTube will notify you each time I publish a new video. So this technique uses luminosity masks in Photoshop to isolate a warm golden effect to the highlights of your images so that you can add that extra bit of warmth to your photos and really give them that lovely warm glow. Now the process of creating luminosity masks in Photoshop is an advanced skill, but once you master it, it will transform your entire workflow. So what I'm showing you in this video is just one application of this advanced technique. First I'll show you how to do it the long way around, manually, showing each step along the way. And then after that I'll show you how to do the exact same thing with a fraction of the effort. So make sure you watch all the way to the end of the video to see how easy it can be. Now with that said, the first thing that I need to show you is the actual technique for adding the warm glowing effect. Uh, and then I'll show you how to add the luminosity mask to it. So the technique is quite simple. I'm going to add an adjustment layer and it's going to be the solid color layer. And when I do that, we get the color picker. I'm just going to pick like a warm kind of orange golden kind of color maybe bring the saturation down a little bit. Um, you know, you can experiment with what color works for you, uh, but something in this kind of warm area here will usually do the trick. And if you're not seeing this exact view of your color picker, then just make sure that the S here for saturation is uh, toggled because uh, this is a question I get a lot from folks who, when I show them a color picker technique, uh, they'll either be set to the hue or the brightness and it just looks a bit different and you know you can't exactly follow along so yeah just make sure you've got the s selected there to get this exact view uh, and then click ok and now the next thing we'll do is change the blend mode of this overlay uh, of this color layer to overlay you can use soft light for a bit more of a subtle effect but we'll use overlay here um, and then just reduce the opacity of the layer to about 30%, between 20 and 30% usually does the job. And now let's just toggle this off and on. So here, um, I should have mentioned actually, this image is kind of a partially processed image of mine. So, you know, we kind of got to the point where I wanted to add a bit more warmth into the image. And so this kind of technique is gonna do that. Now, this is the after, so it's obviously a lot warmer, a very sort of strong golden effect. I can probably reduce that a little bit more if I wanted to, just to blend it in a bit better. Um, but that is the warming technique. Now we need to actually do the same thing, but first create our luminosity selection so that we can create the color fill layer with that selection loaded into the layer mask. So I'll just disable this so that we can start over. Now the first step in the process of creating our selection is to come into the channels panel and on a Mac I'm going to hold command on the keyboard and on a PC that will be control. I'm going to hold that and just click once on the RGB channel and then I'm going to click this uh, button down here, save selection as channel and that's going to show us um, what our selection looks like as a channel in this kind of black and white view. And so let me just get rid of the selection there. Uh, now, just so that you can kind of get your head around what this is representing, basically the white parts or the brighter parts of this image now in this view are the uh, basically what's on the right hand side of the histogram. So the highlights and everything that's darker, gray or black is everything that's on the left hand side of the histogram, i.e. the shadows. So the idea here is to load this selection or this channel, whichever way around you want to look at it, into the layer mask of our warming effect um, adjustment layer. So to do that, 
the, well, the quickest and easiest way to do that is actually load the selection first and then create the effect. Now you don't necessarily need to actually um, create this alpha one channel. You can go directly via the uh, selection that's loaded when you control or command click on the RGB channel. So I'll just do it that way. Now a reason why you might want to actually create that alpha one channel is so that you can make adjustments to it or intersect that channel with another channel or with another selection. Uh, but that's getting a bit kind of advanced for this particular uh, tutorial. So yeah, we'll just go back to going like as easy as possible. Um, so right, we'll command or control click on the RGB channel. So we're loading the selection there of the highlights. We'll come back, back over into the layers panel. And now I'm just gonna create that solid color adjustment layer again. I don't know why it defaults to black. I don't really like that, but anyway, it doesn't matter. We can just come and pick that kind of warm golden color. And it looks a bit weird at the moment. Don't worry about that. Uh, so probably around about there. Click OK to apply that color. Actually, I've just got a slightly different color to the first time. I guess it doesn't really matter. Um, and now with that done, we will choose the overlay blend mode and again, reduce the opacity down to around about 30%. And now the difference, if you look closely at the layers panel here, the adjustment that I just added, the layer mask now has that selection or i.e. what that alpha one channel also looks like. It's got that loaded directly into the layer mask of this adjustment. And so what that's essentially doing is masking everywhere that's darker or black in this uh, in this view um, it's going to mask that it's going to mask this effect out of the image so uh, and everywhere that's white or brighter that's where this effect is going to be showing so essentially what we're doing here if i just toggle this layer off and on a couple of times we're warming the brighter areas of the image but the darker parts aren't taking on that effect and so that, to me, that kind of gives like a more realistic warming effect and it kind of blends in a lot better because typically, um, you know, shadow areas and darker areas are going to be cooler on the, uh, on the sort of the scale of uh, blue to or cool to warm. You know, if you think about the white balance slider in camera raw, for example, um, shadows are usually going to be cooler. Um, so you know it makes sense to when you want to warm something like this to warm the highlights only and so that's what this technique gives you so yeah i did promise at the start of the video that i'll show you an even quicker and easier way to do this so let me just uh, disable this layer again now if you're familiar with my luminosity masking panel then um yeah or if you've already got it then this will uh, be a handy tip for you to be able to uh, just make the most of one of the cool functions that it gives you but if you're not aware or familiar with it then essentially it's it's a tool that i created to make the entire process of luminosity masking a lot quicker and easier and it kind of skips or it allows you to um, skip over having to do all that manual stuff in the channels panel and it does that by way of this uh, this bar across the uh, top section here luminosity selections so I'll just run through the steps to um, to create that selection. So I'll I'll turn the previews on just um, just for the sake of it, so that you can see what's going on. And if I want to, for example, create that same selection that I created just now earlier on in the tutorial, then I would press this one button here. So if I wanted to create a selection that isolates the shadows, then I would go towards the left of the zero. If I want to create a selection that isolates highlights, I'll go towards the right. So in this case, I'll just hit the one button and that's going to load a selection that looks eerily like the selection that you just saw me load in the channels panel. Now, aside from all of the actual luminosity masking stuff, what the panel also gives is a number of uh, shortcuts to various techniques and um, you know, procedures that I personally like to use and I think are quite helpful. And one of those just happens to be the warming filter that I just showed you how to create manually. So 
If I hit that warming filter now with this luminosity selection loaded, I'll just press that and it's going to do that whole process that I just showed you basically in a single click. And so there we go. We have that warming filter. So it picks the, the warm color for you. Again, slightly different to the ones that I picked kind of uh, just off the top of my head. And then it puts it into the correct blend mode and it loads the luminosity selection directly into the layer mask of this uh, layer group. So I've just basically grouped this adjustment with like a just a description there, warming filter. And then we've applied the layer mask to the group rather than to the actual uh, filter itself. So just again to run through that, this is how quick the process to do this entire uh, warming of the highlights would be with my luminosity masking panel. So we just click one on the right hand side of the bar there to load the selection. And then we click the warm button and it creates that warming filter. Uh, it just takes a second to run through. Uh, probably be quicker on your computer. I think mine's going quite slow at the moment. But there we go. Now, if you haven't got the luminosity masking panel, then you can download it at luminositymaskingpanel.com and I'll put a link in the description below the video, of course, as well for you. Um, but if uh, if you haven't got the panel or you don't want to use it for whatever reason, then um, yeah, the, the manual way works just as well. And you know, if you want to start learning how to use luminosity masking from the ground up, then again, as I mentioned at the start of the video, you can download my introduction to luminosity masking PDF, which is free. And it just shows you um, you know, really how to get started using your first luminosity mask. Um, technically, we've kind of just done that here in this video, if this is new to you anyway, but you know, the, the PDF, I think it's about between 15 and 20 pages long, I can't remember exactly, but yeah, it just gives a lot more background um, into the whole process and you know, what it all means and how it works. So yeah, I think with that said, uh, we've probably come to the end of this video. So thanks for watching. Remember to give this video a thumbs up if you like. Uh, what you saw and you think it will help you uh, in your photography and also as I mentioned previously just subscribe to the channel if you want to be notified each time I publish a new video. So uh, yeah with that said thanks again for watching and I'll speak to you soon. Cheers.